Hello, I'm going to be giving you a brief overview of the Pavlov mod kit and the new classes that were added to it. To start, we're going to be looking at the game logic. You could view all of the classes added to the mod kit by going to View Options, Show Plugin Content. You will see that we have a Blueprints and Examples folder. We'll go into our Examples folder, and here you'll see we have different examples of the game modes that are the vanilla game modes for Pavlov. I'm going to be starting out with a tutorial game mode that I've created myself just for this video. And we're going to be going over the simple game loop, so to speak, for a game mode. And so I'm going to bring this flowchart up to show you guys a generic overview of a game mode, a round based game mode. So we have our game start, we'll go to our started state. We'll wait one second for players, and then we will check if we have the required players to start the match. If we don't, we'll just go back and we'll wait another second. And then once we have the required players to start the match, which you could set this to one by default for testing, or you could not do this check at all, I guess. Um, but typically you want to set it up so you need two players to start the match if it pits two people against each other. So then we can go to a standby state. And when we're in our standby state, we want to spawn all of the players and we want to configure them. So by configure them, I mean loading them out with their whatever weapons they're going to be using for that round. If we're going to enable buying, enable buying, uh, things of that nature. Next, we'll wait for the players to buy and etc. as I mentioned. It'll go to a match started state after that. And then we will simply wait for the end round condition to be met. This can either be the timer being triggered for the round, or it could be when one team is dead, um, the first person to die, it, whatever you want it to be. If it's not met, we're just going to con continue waiting, right? This will be event based. We're not going to uh, check this over and over again, so we'll know typically when it's ended. But say we hit the timer, um, then it'll trigger this. So then after that, we'll move to our end round state. And then we will say, uh, is our match condition met? Do we want to go back to the lobby? Or if it's a custom server, do we want to rotate to the next map? If we do, then we'll rotate to the next map or go back to the lobby. If not, then we'll start this whole thing over again. So that's just a generic game mode. I think one of the most basic game modes that you can make. Um, but it's sort of what I'm going to be showing here. So let's go ahead and take a look. To start, we have some events laid out already. The way I got access to these events, I could go ahead and delete one, is we go over here to our functions, and we're going to override on round state changed. So now that we've got this function, we want to know what the new state is. So let's look at all of these we have starting which would correspond with our started state right there this should actually be starting rather and then we have standby started and ended same as I should in the uh, flowchart so when we go to starting we're gonna do our wait one second and then here's our condition check do we have greater than zero players we're going to get the game state, get the player array, and we will see if it's greater than zero. N note that this doesn't filter out bots, but for this example, it's not that important. Now, if we do, we're going to go to our standby state, just like we talked about. And here we're going to initialize our players, so we'll spawn them in. We could go ahead and set buying enabled. And you would have to do this per player. Um, we could do this when the player spawned, rather. But you could also set a freeze time here or change the player's health, for instance. So you could set movement uh, disabled. So we could set that disabled here if we wanted to. And then when it was started, we could um, enable movement again. But we're not going to do any of those things because this is meant to be a super simplistic uh, tutorial video. So instead, what we're going to do is move to started after we've spawned our players. And then in started, what we're going to do here is just start our respawn loop, which will continually respawn people if they've been dead for greater than five seconds. Now, 
We're, this will continue to run. We have no condition to determine right now if it ends. So what we are using is we are using our, um, our properties for the game mode. And once again, this event is, is overridden. I could delete it and override it that way. And then also this set game mode properties node, you just have to search for it show up just like that and then we could drag off of the properties and we can make the properties. So for our properties we have if we want no teams enabled or teams always scoring which this will depend on the state if we don't want it to score at the end or the start then uh, we should leave this unticked if we do then you can tick it. If we want to force no scoring so we want to calculate all of our scoring manually our max cash our cash kill reward, cash kill penalty, and then um, increment team score for team-based modes whenever someone kills. If you wanted to score everything manually, once again, just go ahead and tick force no scoring. Auto respawn, which I would suggest creating your own respawn loop. As you saw right here, it's uh, as simplistic as this respawn loop right here. We just set a timer and we loop through all the players in the player array, we check if they're dead, and then we get their spawn transform and spawn them. Now we could also look at the keep bodies tick mark. You could use this if you would like to keep the bodies alive in the level, or keep them from de destroying in the level, I should say. Sorry. And then keep pawn if alive, this will respawn the pawn or move them back to their start starting point if you call uh, spawn and possess pawns at the end of a round. Then we have our inactivity threshold. This will clean up items that are inactive past these threshold limits. And then we have dynamic spawns, which I would highly suggest checking this as well. It will check the spawn point to make sure no one's close by. And then also we have spawn ghost on login, which I would also recommend checking this as well by default. And then lastly, the round state, which is what determines when our game mode is going to go from started to ended. So that's set to 900 seconds. So then once that is complete and the 900 seconds are up, we're going to go through and we're going to clear our respawn timer handle. And then we're just going to delay a little bit to give everyone a second to relax. And then we will set it back to starting, which will just wait for people again. And then it'll restart the match. Now, if we wanted to add our condition for the end match, we could do that right here during ended after the delay. We could check, say, if there's any players left in the match. If this is a community server, more or less, this would be a good thing to do. So you could say, if it's not a popular match, then uh, let's just go ahead and rotate it. So if this is true, we want to set it to starting. And if this is false, we want to get the game mode, cast to game mode, and then we could set it to end match. And this will kick us back to the lobby or it will rotate on a custom server. So that should cover the round state transitions and the general game loop. Now we need to go over what happens when a player is spawned or what happens when a player is killed. How do we set them up with their gear or assign their team? So we have event on player spawned. Once again, you could find this just by selecting the override tab and clicking it in the drop down. This will give us access to the player's status, which has quite a bit of information about the player. From there, we could give them plat cash, we could set their cash, we could set buying enabled, we could give them items, spawn attachments, and set their vitality. You could do quite a bit more than this, but this is just a brief explanation of the major things that you would need to do. So we could, you can see we're spawning them with a deagle, a knife, we're giving their deagle an ACOG, and we're giving them uh, basically full armor and a helmet. I would highly recommend that you collapse all of your logic for on player spawn down to a function. So you can do that by highlighting it all, right clicking, and collapse to a function. 
this will more or less guarantee that it runs in a frame and the call doesn't get skipped for whatever reason if a lot of people are spawning at the same time, which will tend to happen in between round transitions. I would highly recommend not including any delays inside of your player spawn. So we'll just call this player spawn. And now we could look at uh, player killed as well. Or sorry, that's zombie killed. It's over here, player killed. We have the uh, player status that was killed. We have the killer's player state, which you could get their player status from if you'd like. We have, if it was a headshot, and then the killed by item ID. We're not going to be doing anything for this example, but you could base your round conditions off of if everyone's dead for that round, or you can base it off of a certain number of kills required for the round or whatever sort of condition you'd like. We also have on round begin and on round end, which currently for this simplistic game mode example we're not using, as well as on player left and join server, which once again we won't be using, and on custom archon commands. I will cover this in a later video that goes over some of the more advanced uh, topics. Now we can take a quick look at some of the defaults that we have, as well as the functions. We have a definition in our class defaults. This needs to be set if you're going to be using the game logic. And how you get the definition is you create a UGC by going up to Window, Pavlov Workshop, and then you would create new, and that would create a definition file for you. Note that any content that you're adding has to be inside the UGC folder that it creates. So you would link to that and you would set your general settings for the mod or map itself within, inside the, within the definition. I'll cover that briefly in a later video. Now there's also the global info class and player info class and the player proxy class. If you're creating a custom game mode, you can use these classes and they basically are wrappers for the player pawn, the player state, and then the game state. I'll go over these in a later video, but just note that if you want them to be spawned by default and not have to worry about it, you just have to specify them here. Also, here's a quick overview of all of the functions that are included within the game logic or within a library that are globally exposed. We have get the player status, the Pablo player status from their player state as well as their pawn, which will get you all of their information. You can get the game mode properties, which will get all the game mode property information. Get spawn transform, which will get a spawn transform for that player's team, as well as spawn, which will spawn that controller either as a ghost or a player. You can increment the player score or the team score, set the player's cache or the team's cache as well as give it to them. You can set the round state, which we've gone over, and switch off the round state, which we've done, um, as well as set buying enabled, setting movement disabled, and setting the player's vitality. And then additionally, you could spawn items through the mod kit as well as attachments. And there's another function as well uh, for teams, I believe. Set player team. You could set their team ID based off their player state. Typically, I would probably do that either after they died or in between rounds if you were changing teams. You could do it when they spawned as well, right before you were to spawn them inside the loop, determine if they needed to be on a different team and then place them on that team and then spawn them. Next, we have some of the helper library functions. You can get the moderators or the whitelist if it's a community server. You can check if it's a community server or if it's running on a lobby. You can get the game logic, which would be this class that we're in, the global info, which we'll cover in a future video. You can get the UTC time, or rather you could always get the UTC time, but you could get the day of the week now from the UTC time, which was not exposed before. This could be helpful for if you wanted to change out how the game logic works based on the day of the week. You can also load string arrays and strings from files as well as save them to files. 
Uh, note this only works on custom servers. You could also add message handlers as well as player infos and player proxies, which we will cover at a later date. So that's a general overview of the game logic. Feel free if you have any questions to reach out to me on the Discord, it's Mark Day, or look in the workshop channels. There's tons of helpful people there you could ask around. Thanks guys.